Hi, I'm Mega Daga. I'm the Senior Technical Marketing Manager at Cadence for our Vision products. Today we are going to do a continuation session on our challenges for con uh, convolution neural network. The first thing we talked about was the compute, the compute requirement. As we have discussed, uh, based on several networks, we have seen that over the years uh, there has been a huge change. So like over three years, we have seen an increase in compute requirement for more than 6x. Now, one of the easiest solutions could be that we just increase the Mac count on our embedded system, which many people have been doing. So somebody could go and say, OK, which used to be a 256 or a 64 Mac engine can do something now like 256 or 512 or 1K and so on and so forth. So that will be one thing. But just increasing the Mac is not enough. We need to keep in mind that we have the other resources also to support to get the max out of the max, and which we call as Mac utilization. So we need to make sure that we have enough registers, enough accumulators and stuff like that to make up for the max Mac. Now, Mac utilization is a very important terminology to understand because it depends on several factors uh, introduced in the convolution, which, which we have seen in our previous sessions. So some of them were like spatial dimensions of the input channel. So we have seen it's a 3D. So we have width, we have height, we have depth. Each of them play a different role. Then we have, I should probably call it input dimension rather than spatial dimension to be more accurate. Then we have kernels. Kernels we have seen can be anything from 1 by 1, 5 by 5, to so 11 by 11s. And then there are something called number of kernels, which basically decides the output depth, the depth of the output. All these fact, uh, variables and something like strides, uh, which add another dimension to the mac utilization. So all these different factors can add different kind of impact on your MAC utilization, overall MAC utilization. And hence, for that, people have come up with different vectorization schemes. So we are going to talk about three different schemes over here today. The very first is the most commonly used, which is the vectorization along the input width. So let's say I have uh, my regular uh, image. Let's say I have 640 by 480 image, and my depth is a depth of uh, 32. This is my input image. Now I have coefficients. Let's say I have 3 by 3 coefficients. Now depth of the coefficients are same as the input depth, as we know. And there are several sets of those. Let's say there are 18 sets of these coefficient sets. So what we will do is a typical uh, vectorization scheme along the input width, where we take, let's say I'm working on a 64 by SIMD. So I will take the first 64 value along the input width as my vector. And I will take one value from my coefficients as a scalar value. And I will multiply throughout. And I will continue it along that way. So I can take so on and so forth. My vectors will keep going. And this is a typical solution, which works very well if your spatial dimensions are big enough and they can work with that SIMD. Now let's say my second case where my spatial dimensions are not that big. I have something like uh, 6 by 64. But my depth, this is a very common thing which keeps happening with neural network as we go deeper in the layer. The spatial dimensions start becoming small, and the depth start becoming big. So let's say I have 6 by 64, but my depth is 256. Same thing with the coefficients. The coefficients are still 3 by 3. And now I have something 256. And I have so on and so forth. In this kind of situation, I can actually do vectorization along my input depth. 
So this is the vectorization scheme along input depth. So what we will do now is, because I have a 64 way SIMD, this works perfectly. I will take this as a vector, and these will be my scalar coefficient. My next vector along the input depth, because we are going on depth, will be now this guy. And I will take the coefficient from there in the depth direction. So this is a scheme basically which work for different kind of input um, dimensions. And it's very important to know because at the innermost loop of the convolution, you want to have as many input data as possible so you don't have to reload the data and you don't have that overhead. That's why it's very important to understand all these different ones. Now, a third case which I would like to highlight is, let's say, I have a very small of those now, so I will still very well in my SIMD width. But I have a case where I have seven by seven. My depth is long. Let's say I have about 92 depth. But in this case, my spatial dimension is so small that I cannot fit it along my uh, SIMD width. But in this case, we might have this three by three which is going into 192 depth. And I have several of those, 192. But this time, I have 64 of these. So what I can do is what some we can call as output depth vectorization. So now we are going to do multiple outputs. And what that will mean is now our input will work as scalar values. So I will just take one of these, but my vector will come from my coefficients. So I will take the first element in these and all those 64. And all the, six, uh, the first element in all those 64 kernels will become my vector. And I will multiply to the input dimensions. And I will create 64 different output values now together. So different schemes working for different scenarios to get the max out of your max, uh, max, which is the max utilization. So different ways to get the max for your compute power, and uh, hence very important to solve these challenges we will keep facing in the CNN world. So that's it for uh, this session. Thanks for joining in, and stay tuned. Thank you. Mm -hmm.